What is going on, investors? Back again. Time to talk about another stock this time. Intel Corporation, ticker symbol INTC. They reported earnings last Thursday. My apologies for not getting the video up right away. I was out on the golf course the last couple days. So now back to business. We got Intel. Some interesting stuff happened with this stock. Okay, as you recall, maybe if you've been following this channel for a while, they reported earnings back in July. And then we had this big gap. When we come to the stock chart, we'll see it. This is where we were pre-earned earnings the prior period in Q2 and then we had this big gap down and then we kind of swung trade this I recall uh you know buying in somewhere down here and we swung trade it up into this range and then boom the, the stock kind of waved around a little bit and it recovered a little bit of this gap but then boom it recorded earnings again and then we're gap down here so we'll jump into why Intel had such a bad quarter why investors have sold it off close to the lows that we made just about three months ago so uh, an interesting take though here, just a little bit broader view. So Intel had a really bad quarter, but what was good was the PC division. So the, the chips that are going inside personal computers because people need new computers or working at home, things like that. So uh, the take is that it might be really good for Apple and Dell and HP and Le uh, Lenovo because... Intel kind of uh, telegraphed that PC demand's really strong, but as we get jump in here, into the rest of Intel's business actually deteriorated, deteriorated a little bit, and I think it has some investors spooked a little bit. We see here revenue. I just want to give you a broad view first, and then we'll jump into the numbers. So PC-centric down here in this dark blue went from 9.7 in the previous period in Q319, and it went up a little bit. Okay, that's not fantastic, but maybe people were anticipating maybe a decline decline or it did not increase at all. And we did. We were basically flat up a little bit. What has investors selling this stock off is the data center was right here in light blue. It went from 9.5 down to 8.5. So it has investors wondering, is this a trend? Are we going to be shedding a billion dollars off this data centric business a quarter over or year over year? It has some people concerned. You see here, we went from $19.2 billion down to $18.3 billion in revenue. So we jump over to here and we actually see it here in the hard numbers. We've got the three months ended here, nine months ended here. You see, we went from 19.2 down to 18.3. Let's check out our gross margins. Let's see what happened there. Not good at all. Take a look. We went from 7.9 up. Okay. We dropped our revenues and our cost of sales went up. That is a toxic mix. And this is a, one of the reasons why a stock is going to gap down. When you drop your revenue and your cost of sales goes up, that is not good. You see, we earned 11 billion on our gross margin in the previous period. Now we're down to 9.8 billion dollars. That is not good considering uh, how fast uh, revenues dropped as well. Now we've got some other costs. Let's see how well Intel controlled these in a quarter where the revenue was down. Not great, not bad though. Okay, they held flat. Things are good. We had a little bit of restructuring and things like that that benefited them a little bit. But we went from 4.8 down to 4.7, not as big a drop as you probably would have liked to see when you take a, in, in account that these revenues dropped quite a bit as well and our cost of sales went up as well. So not a great mix of sales in the quarter for Intel. For the nine months, it's, it's generally holding true, although we've had uh, increasing revenues on the nine month. Gross margin ticked up a little bit. And our operating expenses actually went down. So that's actually good. For When you stretch Intel out for the, the full year, it's not nearly as bad as this quarter. This quarter was pretty bad. And that is why the stock reacted the way it did and gapped down really hard. Almost identically. Not as big a gap, it looks like, as the previous period. But it's pretty bad. So all things considered, they are buying back some shares. We'll take a note at that in, in a little bit. We went from 4.4 down to 4.2 shares. So that's good. That's that helps EPS. That's why you don't necessarily want to follow that. Now, in terms of net income, we went from about six billion down to four point three billion. Not a great quarter at all because when you analyze this number out, it's a little bit lower than our nine-month average that we've got going on. But in the previous period, for nine months, we made fourteen. 
0.1 and now we're at about 15.1. So not a bad nine months. Again, it was a very bad quarter. We'll see if Intel is able to bounce back. Let's jump over to the balance sheet, see what we have going on. Notice here, cash is down a little bit. Short terms investments up a little bit. This is from the beginning of the year. These trading assets, I'm going to assume that's basically cash as well. That's up quite a bit. So that's nice. Accounts receivable. All things considered, we, we ticked up on our current assets by about $5 billion. Let's see where that came from. I'm going to assume it came from some kind of debt raise. So we've got debt here. And it's kind of hard when they don't put the lines in, but I think this is our debt. We went from 25 up to 36. And so that's $11 billion in debt added to the balance sheet. But you see here, we paid off a little bit of this short-term debt. So let's roll down to cash flows and dissect this a little bit more. Let's take a look at our net income before we get down to the liability side. Well, we've got nine months ended here. We pull down our net income for nine months. Again, for the nine-month view, it wasn't nearly as bad as the quarter. We add back in things like depreciation, stock-based compensation, amortization of intangibles, and we get to pretty solid cash flows, okay? You know, we get about, you know, we add back in about $10.4 billion worth of cash, and we get to about $25 billion of cash flow for nine months. That's up slightly from the previous period, and it's actually up in relation to how much we're growing our net income. So things are looking pretty good there. All things being equal, we're looking pretty good on our operating activities. Most of this is about standard, what you'd like to expect. Now, now, let's dissect our investing activities just a little bit. Take a look at this debt. So issuance of long-term debt right here. We went from 650 all the way up to 10 billion. So there's where our $10 billion of, of debt added to the balance sheet. Now we did pay repayment of some debt and kind of converted it. It looked like maybe some short-term to some long-term. So you can subtract that out. That's about 4.5 billion. Now that doesn't explain all the cash loss. Okay. They, they didn't have, they didn't add about 10 billion dollars in cash. You see our current assets went from 31 up to 36. That's only about 5 billion, okay? So, where did the rest of that go? A lot of it actually went to this repurchase of common stock. And so they they repurchased in the last 9 months a uh, 12 billion dollars worth of stock. Uh, then that pairs uh, you know a little bit more than the previous period. Now, I I don't mind that if a lot of that purchase was down here. If they were buying these shares up at 61, that's a problem. If they were buying them down here in the 50s, that might be good. And if they're buying these shares down in here, that's probably a good thing for investors, quite frankly, because they are supporting the stock as it declines. Now, let's jump over to the stock chart. Again, we had this big gap from the previous. I don't like double gaps, okay? It, we, it shows that there's something wrong with the stock and it's something that the investors are not anticipating. So we had this big gap here. Uh, you know, shareholders kind of forgot about it. And then we gap down again. We're, we're approaching these lows. Now, I, I think that this stock has a good chance. It actually touched and wicked through the lows and not quite the lows, but where we settled on the lows back when our previous gap happened back in July. Now, I think we could come down all the way to that 47 mark with Intel, and that would be kind of a line in the sand because that's about where we bottomed out just intraday uh, back when this uh, company reported earnings in the previous period. So I wouldn't necessarily run out and get Intel, but I think we're going to have some swing trade opportunities in this one. I'm going to monitor this one closely because we are at, we are basically at kind of an area of support here with Intel right in this range. We're not like right on it, but somewhere in this range, the stock should catch a bit. And if they are still executing a buyback on this, you're right here in this range, right in this between 47 and $48 a share is an interesting spot to acquire Intel for, a, in my opinion, more of a swing trade. I think there's some stuff wrong with the stock. When you're dropping your revenues on your number one business here, that's dropping a billion year over year. That's a problem. And we all know that the PC centric, you know, the, the chips inside computers that might not be recurring. Okay. I know a lot of people are working from home and people needed to upgrade their computers. Will they be doing that again next year? Or will the computer that they just bought be able to last them maybe two, three, four years? So we could have just seen a really nice upgrade cycle in PC. 
And we might not see this revenue repeat. Now, this data centric, you might want to dig into it a little bit more, see if it was just a bad quarter or maybe it'll bounce back. Who knows? But it wasn't good. So what I like is this stock to pull back in between 47 and 48. I think you could come in, step in there and play up in, I think the earliest, I think this stock has a chance there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of resistance for this stock right up in this range, probably 49. I, I think you could push this line up into 49. You see these, there's a ton of candles that kind of uh, wick through or kind of touch this 49 level. So I think you could play this stock. If it comes down to 47, I think you can play it from 47 up to 49. I think after 49, it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of tough treading uh, through this 49 level, but it potentially could come back to, up into this 50-day moving average. You see here, we gap down way below our 50-day moving average. That's this green line right here. And, and people probably in here were thinking, we're never going to get close to that line. Well, look what happened. We come back close to the 50-day moving average here, kind of got rejected, came back and finally touched it and actually exceeded it and jumped over it. So I would actually expect the same thing to happen over the next, uh, call it two to three months, is this stock, this 50-day moving average is probably going to turn negative and it's probably going to turn negative and start drifting towards this 50 mark. That's ultimately where I think you could swing trade, uh, you know, uh, Intel into from the 47 up to the 50. So interesting stock. If you're looking to buy and hold personally, I would wait for the news to get a little bit better. You would hate to be holding this stock at, at the, you know, let's say this stock drifts up into the 50, 52 level, you know, back up in here. And then they report earnings again in three months and they have a terrible quarter and it gaps down and it breaks out these lows because the more time you test this 47 level, eventually it's going to break. Okay. Eventually, eventually investors are just going to give up and this stock's going to break down. The dividend yield is not high enough. It's 2.74 that dividend investors, while they like that 2.74, it's not like an AT&T or a Verizon or some of these other stocks that are closer to five, six or 7% yield. So that dividend probably isn't high enough to really, really hold stock where it is. Now the share buyback that they have going on in Intel might be enough to, to add a little layer of safety under this, but in my opinion, not enough to go long at the current moment. I look at Intel as kind of a swing trade, kind of a gap down and then kind of drift back up kind of trade. That's how I personally would play it. If you're stuck holding Intel, I'd set a stop loss. You don't necessarily have to set it here at 47, but maybe come down to 46 and a half because if you break this 47 level, who there you know, it, it, it's your guess what's underneath this level, okay? That you'd have to really jump this out probably to a monthly view and then see what's underneath it. Yeah, you've got some support under here right at 44. You see these candles kind of uh, bottomed out right here in this 44, 43 level. So there's a little bit of support there. But if you don't want to lose your investment, uh, you know, I would put a stop loss somewhere under here because if you break this 44 level, see this big candle right here, you could take that out and you could come to the tops of these candles and that would leave you at $38 a share. So you wouldn't want to peel off. That's about $10 lower than where we're at today. Personally, if you want to go long or you want to add to your Intel shares, this is the area I would look at is right at 38. Okay. Will it get down there? I don't know. That's anybody's guess. But if this stock drifts down to this level, this is not a bad sign. Now, what I'm also seeing on this monthly view is actually something really nice. Take a look at this. This is our 50-day moving average. You see how consistently this has provided some support for shares. You see it did it here as well. Take a look. We're right on this 50-day moving average. So if this stock is going to perform, it's going to bounce off this moving moving average. And it is still positive. It's still a positive moving average. And so it could ride this up. That's why I like this more as a shorter term trade. Put your stops in at 43, 44. And then I think you really think about going long and maybe buy and hold this down at 38 and a quarter, maybe 38 and a half. So that what's Intel for you. We'll be back again this week. We've got lots of earnings. I think we've got uh, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, uh, all the big stocks are reporting this week. So it should be an eventful a week on the channel. Hit that like button and that subscribe button if you like what we're doing here. We'll be back again soon. Good luck with your investments.